Okay, good morning and <clears throat> welcome. Today is Monday, the ninth day of Elo. Sorry, couldn't give the shir yesterday. I lost my voice. Baruch Hashem got it somewhat back today. And um, so we will give, we'll go back to the shir, the lesson of Saturday, Shabbos, the seventh day of Elo, and Sunday. The eighth day of Elul, those are not very long shiurim, so we should be able to go through all three lessons today. And this chapter, the 11th, the letter 12 in Iger HaKodesh, the Alter Rebbe, talks about the power of tzedakah in making peace, true peace, God's peace. And uh, the Alter Rebbe began with the verse that it says that Maisei uh, Tzedakah, the action, the act of Tzedakah will bring peace, and the work of Tzedakah will bring tranquility and surety. And he asked the question, "What's the difference between the two? So he began first by explaining what is peace, what is true peace, what is peace the way God's sees it, the way God makes peace. Where do we see that God makes peace? In the famous verse, Ose shalom bimramav, hu yaseh shalom aleinu, in the prayer. The verse says, Ose shalom bimramav, God makes peace in up in heaven. It says that there are those angels, and the, and the Michael is the angel of kindness, there's the angel, the angel of the water, uh, the angel of fire, Gabriel, which is the angel, represents the restriction, attribute of Gevura, of restriction, and Hashem makes peace between them. And this is exactly like two ministers of a king, that each one has their own agenda. But when the king is present, their, their agenda is completely nullified within the presence of the king. They all work for the same king. So when there is the angel, the attribute of chesed says to give, the attribute of gevura says not to give, unless the person deserves, then it comes making peace is by revealing the, the root, the source, God. And that is through the attributes of Tiferet, that's called the attributes of beauty, which is a combination of the right and the left. It is a combination of the kindness, the chesed, the giving, which is represented in the color white, or restriction, severities, which is represented in the color red. And the combination of the colors, just like two colors make something beautiful, that is called the level of Tiferes, the attribute of the beauty. And this, says the Alt Rebbe, is revealed through our actions. Sp uh, particularly, when we act in a way that we give to those who don't deserve, we bring upon making the peace, we make it, we bring upon that revelation, the, the, the powerful revelation which makes the peace up in heaven. And it's making the peace also here, also, as we'll shall still explain. Says the Alter Rebbe. Again, this is the shear from Saturday, Shabbos, seventh of Elul. Now the arousal from above, and the elicits a manifestation of this great illumination. An immense diffusion from the infinite Ein Soif light, as we said. Lasa is Sholom and Iskala Eltri in order to bring about the above mentioned peace between the angels. So he when how is it happening? Through our actions. Ibi Sarusa Dulasata, it is affected by an arousal from below, Bemaisa Tsadaka, in the act of charity. And by the benevolent bestowal of one man to another. 
of life, graciousness, kindness, and compassion. The man the least let me go make clue to he who has not a, nothing of his own. Thereby to revive the spirit of lowly, of the lowly, and to revive the hearts of the downcast. So when we act in that way, that arouses also above the great Tif Eres, the, what's called the Rachamim, the attribute of mercy, which is above Chesed and Gevurah. Continues the Alter Rebbe, in addition to making peace above in heaven, we also making peace down here, as we shall soon explain. And that is through what? Through the Torah study, specifically a Torah study when we study for the right sake, for its own sake, and through the tzedakah. It is well known that our sages of blessed memory said of a person who engages in the study of Torah for its own sake. What does it mean studying Torah for its own sake? You, uh, you study Torah not, be, not, because, not in order to get smart, not in order to get famous, or to get other benefits. He studies Torah because this is God's story. He wants to connect with Hashem. When you study Torah for the own for its own sake, may seem shalom befamalia shel maila u befamalia shel mata. He makes peace within the heavenly retinue and within the terrestrial retinue. What is the ret the heavenly retinue? This is famalia shemalia mam asorim vaamidus and iskaros laeil. This comprises the above mentioned princesses and attributes. As we said before, you're making peace between the angels above. For these are the super the supernal echalot, which means chambers literally, in the world of Berea, the spiritual world, as stated in the sacred Zoya. And what does it mean to make peace in the terrestrial retinue? It says, This comprises the lower echalot. What is the lower chambers, the lower echalot? Specific, all the lower levels, worlds, the highest spiritual world is pure godliness. Once you go down after the atzilut, you go down to Bria, Yitzira, Asiya, it already becomes more mixed of some evil also is mixed there, some separate entities. Because in essence, anything that is separated from Hashem is in a sense considered not good. This is Befad Bo'ilam Azeh Shafal, especially this lowly world, which since the sin of Adam is mingled of good and evil. Not only is it mingled, and the evil rules over the good. As it is written, while man rules over men. Meaning, a man of wickedness, representing the forces of Kalipa, the forces of not good, rules over the man of holiness and harms him too. As the verse concludes, it is also written, a nation will overpower a nation as the balance of power fluctuates between the forces of good and the forces of evil. This is empirically evident with the terrestrial man who is called a microcosm. So we are the microcosm of the world. For sometimes the good within him prevails, and sometimes the reverse, heaven forfend. Therefore, there will be no peace in the world until the ultimate time, until the time when Mashiach comes, when the evil will completely cease to exist. What will be then? When the good shall be refined from the evil, in order to cleave to its root and source, the divine source of life. 
ואזי מספר דקל פולי אולבן ורוח אטום יבוא מן האורץ, at that time all evil doers shall be scattered and the spirit of impurity shall pass from the earth כשיסבור ימי תוכה בחינס התוי ומחייהו when the element of good which sustains it will be extracted from its midst because nothing exists in this world outside of holiness So the evil ha- gets its nourishment from the holy forces. And once we elevate, we purify, we separate, then they, you disconnect the source of energy. So that, that's how this is the peace that you bring in this world. In order to bring a peace in this world is to reveal the ultimate godliness. And that is done through, as we'll see soon, uh, through revealing Hashem in this world, that will eliminate the, completely the, God, the godliness, the evil from this world, by revealing the godliness. Continues the Alter Rebbe on the lesson from yesterday, Sunday, the 8th of El. And he says, And this refinement itself of the good from the evil will also take place through a manifestation of divinity below. In other words, just like the, we said about the angels above, the refinement is through revealing something uh, of a higher source. The same thing in this world, the ultimate refinement is, will be through a revelation of godliness. And it says, with a great illumination and immense effluence, as it says, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of God. This is the prophecy, what will happen when Mashiach will come. And the glory of God shall be revealed. Now this is as regard to the future of the world in general. And in general, the future of the world, it will be a peaceful world with the coming of Mashiach and so on. Now the Alter Rebbe goes to say, that even before the coming of Mashiach, we can also have a taste of this kind of peace. And we said, what is the peace that we need in this world? The peace is by, of, of being in a state of recognizing Hashem. That Hashem is the only existence in this world. The al is going to say now that even before the coming of Mashiach, even now, we can also have a sense of that experience. And that is through during the prayer. When we pray to Hashem, what is prayer? Prayer is about connecting to God. It says, the Sula Mutzav Atza, Varisha Magia Shamaima, there's a ladder that is placed on the ground and, and, and the head reaches up in heaven. And we climb up the ladder during the prayer to reach a... a, a, a a deeper understanding of, of godliness, the existence of Hashem. And, and it's not easy. It's not an easy thing to achieve because we live in a physical world, with physical surroundings. And it is, as the Zoya says, and actually in this week's Torah portion of Kiteitze, it says, Kiteitze la melchama levecha, when you go out fighting a war, says the Zoya, what is the t- type of war we're talking about? Shas Tzloisa, Shas Kaba. The time that we pray is the time of fighting a war. We're fighting a war with all the forces of the outside forces in order to be able to focus on the and understanding, having an experience of, of true godliness. This is something we, we can experience during prayer, but especially, says the Alter Rebbe, how do you experience this? When the prayer comes with a preparation. Back in the days, in the time of the temple, People, all they needed to do is to say, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Alekein, Hashem Echad, and they had this experience. As a generation did, uh, went, you know, went down lower levels, they needed more and more and more preparations. So they, they added to the prayer Shema, they added the blessings of Shema that describes the angels, then they added the verses that talks about the stars, the, whole, the moon, and, and the heaven, and the earth, and all everything what Hashem does. As generations went on and on, we added more and more preparations. And here the Alta Rebbe says, 
What is the preparations to be able to achieve this kind of peace, a taste of the peace of the future? Is through studying the Torah Lishma for its own sake before the davening. That's why we study the Hasidus through giving the tzedakah that you give out of yourself because that's also a form of sacrifice, removing yourself and giving to others. This brings about peace in this world, at least to a taste of it. Continues the Alter Rebbe. That's what Alter Rebbe continues. But as regard to the terrestrial man, the whole ace metzoy zut feel at every time of finding every propitious time of finding God, zut fila meaning prayer. Or at other times designated for secluding oneself with one's maker. If to secure, secure, seclude yourself doesn't mean you have to run to the forest. You secure, seclude your mind and focusing on Hashem. Every individual in proportions to his deeds. Every individual, according to the deed, is granted a foretaste of this refinement by engaging in Torah study for its own sake. And the same is accomplished by meaning of charity. As is related in the Gebaran that Rabbi Laza would give a coin to a poor man and then would pray. Because it is written through tzedek, through righteousness, which is means tzedakah, charity, will I behold your countenance. And what is the countenance? This revelation during prayer is a manifest illumination and a fusion of knowledge and understanding. Enabling one to meditate on the greatness of Hashem. In order to beget thereby an intellectual generated, intellectually generated or a love. As is known, we explained this many times, that through meditating in the greatness of Hashem, like any emotions is generated through Understanding, we understand something positive, it generates a positive feeling. And through this, the good is extracted for God and elevated to Him, and the evil is separated. As it is written, the crucible is for refining silver and the, and the melting pot is for gold and man is refined according to his praise what does it mean when you have this what's called a crucible to like, like the oven that, that separates the silver from the from the dust from the bad stuff so every time you put it in there it refines more and more and finds more of the not good so not the pure silver and it separates them and the pure silver comes out. The same thing is with the gold. So the same thing says the verse is also with man's praise. The one way of understanding this is when you praise a person, that calls that calls out a judgment. Because God hears the praise and he starts judging the person whether he's really worthy the praise that is being praised. And that's how you find more and more dirt in the person. But here the Alter Rebbe takes it in a di- explains it differently. It says, That when we praise Hashem, the praising of Hashem, which is the prayer, is also a refinement process. Now we're finding we're able to elevate and purify the good and to understand, appreciate the, the greatness of Hashem and to separate the not good things that oppose Hashem. This means according to his praise of God during prayer with profound knowledge. 
in order to beget awe and love, kacha nivra atoiv v'nifra dara. In this way, the good is extracted and the evil is separated. Keviru v'piru dasigi mekasa v'zav v'matzre v'ku. Just as dross is separated, I guess this is the dirt that is separated from the silver and gold in a crucible or melting pot. Continues the Alter Rebbe in today's lesson, the lesson from Monday, the 9th of Elam. And now the Alter Rebbe goes back to the beginning of the chapter, would be explained. So he explained that there is two things of tzedakah. That there is maiseh tzedakah, the act of tzedakah, and there is avoidness of tzedakah, the work of tzedakah. And we said the the act of tzedakah leads to peace. The work of tzedakah leads to tranquility, hashkait, vetach, surety. And we ask, we ask the question, what is the difference? So here the Alter Rebbe is beginning to explain the difference and is going to say that there's two ways of giving tzedakah. There's the tzedakah that we give because this is our nature. As the Alter Rebbe says in the first chapter, the first chapter he speaks more about the nature of the animal, animalistic soul of a Jew it comes from klipas Nega, the neutral shell that can turn into good. It has the good natures in there. Here the Alter Rebbe goes further, it says also we have the, the nature of chesed that comes from, from our godly soul and this is why the, na- the nature of, of Jewish people is, is to give. Even today, you go, you, know, you see the percentage of the people who contribute, philanthropists, the Jewish people is way, way beyond, much more than anything, anyone else. So you have the nature of giving. So there's the giving that you give out of your nature, out of your compassion, compassionate nature. That's called the mindset of tzedakah. The act of tzedakah, acts that is done because of your natural state. Then there is the avoidance of tzedakah. The work of tzedakah is when the giving comes to a point that you already exhausted the giving out of your compassion. You're giving more. You're giving something that really doesn't even make sense anymore to give. It doesn't, it doesn't call the compassion, doesn't call the giving. You want to give way beyond. That is called Avoidas at Tzedakah. And that's what Al-Tabi continues to explain. Now it is well known that the Jews by the very nature are compassionately and perform deeds of loving kindness. Why? This is so because their soul issues from God's attributes, which means Asher Chesed Goiva Beim Al Midas Adin Vagvur Vatzimtzum, in which a Chesed prevails over the attributes of Din Gevura and Tzimtzum. The attributes of Gevura is attributes of judgment, restriction, contraction, but the Chesed prevails. The attribute of giving prevails. So Kamesh Kosov Gova Chaste Alereyev, as it is written. His chesed prevails over those who fear him, alluding to the fact that the divine attribute of chesed prevails over the divine attributes of gevura, because the gevura is connected with fear. The soul is therefore called the daughter of a koyen, bas koyen, the daughter of a priest. You know, the coin represents chesed, the kindness. Since it derives from the attribute of chesed, which is called koin, as it is written in the sacred Zoya. In a Sodak Altareb continues, At Zdoke Anim Shechas Mibchinezu, Nikres Beshem, Maise At Zedake. Now, the charity that issues from this source, from the soul's inherently kind and compassionate nature, is referred to as the act of charity. Why? 
על דובר שכבר נעשו, או שנעשו תמיד ממילא. Because the term act, mindset, applies to that which is already done, or which is constantly being done spontaneously. That's called mindset. In Hebrew you say, ma'asim shebechol yom, acts of every day, daily acts. So mindset, tzedakah, means the act of tzedakah that you do automatically. This is your nature, you're doing. Vehi dovra oive verogil tomid. And thus some, something existent, common, and constant. The afkan, and here too, with God to tzedakah, this is motivated by the soul's innate sense of kindness and compassion. The trait of kindness and compassion is implanted in the souls of the entire house of Israel from a foretime, from way before. From the time of the very creation. And they evolve from God's attributes. As it is written in regard to Adam's soul entering his body, it says, and he blew into his nostrils a soul of life. And we say in the morning prayer every day, like what we say concerning the entry of each and every soul into his individual body, you blew it into me. And we said it early in the Tanya, what it says in the Zoya, Uman de Nofa Chulu, and he blows, blows from within, from his innermost being. So too is the analog. Since the soul emanates from the inward aspect of the divine attributes, it is infused with them as well, so that the attribute of kindness dominates the soul even as it finds itself within the body. That is why the, the that is why we are kind. Begam, not only is it something that was created in the beginning, but every single day, God recreates the world. Furthermore, in His goodness, God renews His act, the Maise, of creation every single day. Likewise, with regard to the soul, below it is written, they are new every morning. So that is the acts of tzedakah, something that comes natural. But then there is the kind of tzedakah that doesn't come natural. It's something that you have to fight with yourself to do it, to give more. That is called avoid as a tzedakah, the work of tzedakah. <laughs> The term service, however, applies only to what a man does with, an, with immense exertion, contrary to his soul's inclination. You're giving to tzedakah. Sometimes people are very obnoxious. And whatever you give them, they say, oh, no, that's not good enough. A person like this, you don't want to give tzedakah. And you still give him. That you're fighting your nature. You're inviting guests in, uh, in the house. A tremendous mitzvah to bring guests into the house. But sometimes you pick and choose which guest that you're going to invite. Those people that can I have a fun conversation with. Those people that are fun to be with. But sometimes when you invite someone that is not so much fun, you're going against your nature. So you're doing the avoida, the working in, 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 in doing this mitzvah. This is, says the Alter Rebbe, triggers something much, much more powerful. But he over, overrules his nature and will out of deference to the supreme will. And this, this he brings examples, whether it's to the mitzvah of tzedakah, to the mitzvah of prayer, or study Torah. You can do those things, study Torah also. You can study Torah just, you know, because you enjoy, it's a nice, it's a pleasurable thing, nice intellectual experience, 
Or you can work yourself and study very much beyond your natural desires to study Torah. The same thing is with prayer. Exhausting himself, for example, in Torah and prayer to the extent of pressing out the soul. Since the soul is not naturally inclined to such a situation, a great deal of toil and effort is required. And in our case too, with regard to the commandments of giving charity, to serve, what does it mean to serve with tzedakah? That entails giving far more than would be prompted by the nature of one's compassion and will. As our sage of blessed memory comment, he commented in the verse, the Torah says, Give, you shall give. Why does it say twice give? It says the Torah, so that com- the Gemara says, even a hundred times, even the person comes back to you again and again and again and again. But if the person is in need, you already exhausted your natural compassion to give to that person. But here the Torah says, give, you shall give, repeats the giving twice to teach you to give even if it goes against your natural instinct. That's the end of today's shir. And tomorrow's shir is going to explain what is the difference between what we get through the act of tzedakah and what we get through the toil of tzedakah, the work of tzedakah. So we'll see you as at the Shem tomorrow morning. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.